Hey guys, today I'm going to walk you through the basics of how to record into clips, which is the basic level of recording in Ableton Live. And of course, we do this in session view, which is this side of Ableton Live. What I'm talking about here, if you press the tab key, you switch around to the arrangement view, which we're going to use later. But for today, we're working in session view. So usually when I'm creating a track, uh, the first thing I like to do is set the tempo. And if you're not sure what different tempos sound like, you can always turn on the click here. And if you press play, you'll hear how fast it is. Now I'm in the mood for something a bit slower and I'm thinking around probably 80 BPM. Let's hear what that sounds like. That's kind of nice. Another thing to do before you even start is go into the edit menu record quantization and it's good to do this it's good to set this up to either eighth note or sixteenth note quantization uh what that means is as you play notes it's going to make them be in time uh it of course you saw there there were quite a few options and it depends on what you're doing and how you're doing it as to which option you choose but usually six especially at a slow tempo sixteenth note quantization is a pretty safe choice um and at this stage, without going into too much detail, that's gonna do the trick for us. So what I like to do when I'm building a track, the first thing I like to do is throw down some drums. So I'm gonna go into the uh, drum category and I'm just gonna pick a drum kit. With this little headphone icon lit here in blue, you can hear a quick little sample of the kit just by clicking on it once. If you click on it twice, it'll load it into the track that's currently highlighted. Um, and of course I turned that off, but now I'll turn it on again. Just for today, I'm gonna to grab Acoustified Kit 4. So if I wanted, I could either double click on it or drag it into the first MIDI track. And now that it's in there and with my monitoring on auto, when I play the lowest end of my keyboard from C1 up to D sharp 2, I get all these instruments. But you can see it's laid out in a grid so that if you have some kind of grid pad instrument, you can play it on that instead. But right now I'm just playing on a MIDI keyboard. And always, always C1 is my kick, uh, D1 is my snare, and F sharp one is my hi-hat. So at this point, we could either play something in or draw it in. And because this uh, video demo is about playing stuff, I'm gonna play something in. So here's how it works. Whichever channel, you have this little button turned red on the bottom. That's the channel that you're coming currently playing into. Right now I only have one channel with an instrument in it, so it doesn't really make a difference. Oh, and for today's example, I don't need my audio channels, but uh, if I was, I would need to have enabled some audio, uh, uh, a microphone input or something like that, but nothing's enabled right now, which is why those are grayed out. But they're not really part of this demo anyway. We're just dealing with MIDI tracks anyway, so I'm gonna delete those. So right now, this track is enabled because this red thing is lit up and I can hear it because monitoring is on auto. If I turn monitoring off, I don't hear anything when I play the keys. So I put monitoring on auto. Uh, in means I can hear it all the time. Auto means I can hear it I can hear it as long as this red button is lit. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hit play, and by hitting play, I'm gonna hear my click. And when I'm ready, I'm gonna hit record. This circle button is gonna record a clip in here. And what's cool about Ableton is, according to this, this uh, value here, right now it says one bar or one measure, that means um, when I push the record button, it's going to start recording into a clip at the start of the next bar. As you can see, you can select different values here and none just means it's gonna start recording instantly. Half means it'll start recording half a bar later or at the next half bar and so on. One bar is the safest. So what that means is as I press start here, I press play. If I press it now, it'll start now. So it starts at the next whole bar. Before I do that, I'm just gonna practice what I'm gonna play. I might just do a simple kind of beat with my kick and my snare. So I'm playing C and D, the two lowest white keys on my keyboard. And you can hear that my playing wasn't exact there, but that's okay because I selected this record quantization feature. Uh, it's gonna clean it up for me. And so I'm gonna hit play now and start my metronome. And then when I'm ready, I'm gonna start recording here. And of course, when I click the record button, it'll start recording the next whole bar. So I'll start it now, two, three, four.
and I just hit my space bar to stop it. And when I double click on that clip, you can see that my kicks and my snares are perfectly in time because of the quantization. And Ableton was smart enough to know that by me stopping it, um, I re it stopped it exactly uh, at the end of two bars. Another thing I can do is if I hit play with my spare hand, um, if I hit the play button, Ableton will start looping it straight away. So I'm gonna stop that one and I'll try another one and you'll see what I mean there. So there's my click. And again, here I go, two, three, four. Now we hit the play and you can see it starts looping around exactly. And once again, everything's on time there. Next thing I wanna do is add some hi-hats. I can also turn that click off. Actually, I might leave it on for a sec. To add hi-hats, <clears throat> that's the F sharp key on my keyboard. And if I wanna record over that without deleting what's there, I use this little button here, that's the clip overdub button. So essentially what it'll do is it'll add notes onto any clip that's playing where you've got the record arm button pressed. So I'm gonna play my clip and when I hit this, it's now in record mode and I'm just gonna play some hi-hats. And now I can turn the click off and I can also turn off the record uh, overdub button and there's a drum loop. Just for clarification, if I wanted, instead of playing it in, here's the one I did earlier, I could also draw them in with my mouse, uh, either double clicking, there's the hi-hats there at F sharp. Uh, I'll turn that blue on so I can hear them. So I could either draw them in like that and I'm double clicking each time or if I hit B to turn on the pencil tool, I just have to single click. And of course, uh, now that I've done one bar, I could also select all of those and use the Option or Alt key on your keyboard to drag them over like that. And now you can see I have two clips that are more or less the same. There's the one I just did with the mouse. And here's the one I just did by ha uh, playing it in. And you can see that the hi-hats here, the velocities are slightly different because I can't enter different velocities easily with the mouse. So that's my drum track. The next thing I might do is think about some chords. So I'm gonna uh, go into the pad section, sounds, closed bass, go into pads, there we go. And the pad that I wanna choose today is called analog slow sweep pad. Once again, if you push this, you can hear any of them. Just a quick sample. But this is the one I want for today. So once again, I'm, I'm gonna drag it into the to the track. Notice here, if because I had that one highlighted, if I double clicked here, it'll actually replace my drum kit with the pad, which is not what I want. This is what it'll sound like. It's playing these notes now as if they were a pad, not a drum kit, which is definitely not what I want. So Command Z to bring my drums back. And there's my pad in the next channel. Uh, I've already thought about some chords I wanna play. I'm just gonna play a C major and a D major. So I'll play along with my drum kit here. Now that I've enabled this track, when I'm ready to record, I'm gonna record into uh, this clip. So here we go, I'll give it another bar round. Here we go, and a one, two pressure chord now, three, four, and C major. D major. C major. D major. And again, if I push now, it loops it around. And once again, you can see, that it's perfectly in time because of that record quantization feature. Now you can see that each time I played a chord, I held it for almost a whole bar, which means I really could have done record quantization. Uh, well, there's not even one bar, but a quarter note would have been fine, but it's nice just to leave it on 16th note to make sure I catch everything. The next thing I'm gonna do, uh, I'm gonna throw down a bass part. So I've got a pad. Uh, I've got drums. For the bass, I'm gonna use a sound called Amber Low Glow. Sounds like that, it's pretty cool. But once again, you can have a listen to a few of them. And so this time I have no more MIDI tracks. So I could either click here, Command Shift T will create a new MIDI track, or that's not necessary. If I just drag this into the empty space, it'll create a MIDI track for me. And here's my new track. So there's my drums, there's my pad with the chord, and now I'm gonna throw a bass in. Let's just think about some things to play. So I'm in C, and I wanna just lay down some Cs. Okay, that should do the trick. 
So once again, uh, when I'm ready, I'm just going to hit record here. Two, three, record and... And because I was using two hands there, I didn't have time to bring my hand over here, but I just pressed stop with the space bar. And once again, you can see that Ableton knew that I was going for four bars. And there's the notes that I played. And of course, you can see once again that they are perfectly in time because of that 16th note quantization. Um, this is what all three sound like together. And while we're listening to that, oh, you can see I've got a bit of red here. I don't like the red. That just means that everything's a bit loud. So what I can do, it's, it's, if I like the balance, I can uh, press tab to go to this side and it's really easy just to bring everything down by 5 dB. So if I just enter minus 5 there, minus 5, and minus 5. Now when I play it, uh, I should have no red there. Because I like to leave my master at zero, but have everything else um, move down to make sure there's no red in the master. I'm going to turn the bass down a little because I think it's a little bit obtrusive there. And the last thing I'm going to add is a melody, but it's the same story. I'm going to go into sounds again. This time I'm going to go into synth lead. I've already checked some of these out before, but as usual, you can just click to hear what they sound like. And the one that I want to choose today is called anger management. I really like the gnarliness of this sound. So I'm going to drag that over into a new track. And you can see when I drag a new track, it automatically uh, record enables that track. So let's, uh, I'm going to experiment with some melodic ideas. Of course, everything else is at minus five, so if I bring that down, let's see, here's a melodic idea. Yeah, that sounds pretty cool. Here we go. Two, three, four, and... Just for some extra, oh, again, once again, you can see everything's perfectly in time there because of the um, the record quantization that we did at the start. And one more thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add to this an audio effect. I like in the delay here, if I want to put it on, I just drag it up here and it pops it in after the effect. I'm going to put it on ping pong delay, so which means the delays are going to go from left to right. Let's have a listen to how that sounds. I'll show you what I mean on its own. I'm going to make them shorter, so I'll turn up to uh, one sixteenth note. I can also filter it the delays only. Yeah, that's kind of cool. So there's four parts. I've got a drum part, a pad or a chord, a bass, and a melody. Here it all is. Oh, forgot to unsolo that. There we go. Here's all the parts. They're in a scene. So I can play all four of them at once just by pushing this. Or if I preferred, I can stop all the clips here and I can try them out one by one. So I, uh, I like bring them in one at a time. So I could start with the drums, then bring in the bass. When I'm ready, bring in my chords. But uh, in the next video, you can see how to really bring that all together and make a piece of music out of it. All right, I hope that was helpful. Have a great one. See ya.